All right, guys, so we're going to do this again. And hopefully someone out there can have the magic answer for this. Okay, here's the Serial 5000 roof mount antenna. You know, you drill a hole and hard mount it. Here's on the MFJ antenna analyzer. Okay. So I could probably tune it a little bit better down here. I mean, it's, it's pretty dang good. Let's put it on channel 20 here. Okay, there you go. SWR 1.1. Was that reactants of 56? I mean, I don't know how accurate that, that ohms thing is there. But uh, here you go. You get the whole picture, okay? There should be nothing wrong with this. You know, pretty good. This antenna right here. The Serial Performer 5000. Okay, this is driving me crazy. I actually removed that antenna totally off the truck. I put a brand new Wilson 5000 through roof antenna on there last night. It did the same exact thing, so I know it's not the antenna. I've used a big tri-mount magnet mount and tried several antennas, and they all do the same exact thing. It doesn't matter. So I can rule out the antenna. Okay. I used to have the Texas Star 667V in this vehicle. I thought it was an issue with the Texas Star. Take it out, put it on the bench inside. Damn thing makes 850, 900 watts. Perfect. No issues at all. I hook it up over the air on my base antenna. Everything's great. Okay. So then I put a Texas Star 350 high drive in here. They won't even key up unless I run the dead key high, and and it, it's crazy. It's just not working right. Throw it on the bench. Everything's great. Right now, I've got a little Texas Star Black Widow 250 in here. Um, it's doing the same thing the other amps did. Put it inside. Works great. The only reason I have a little 250 in here right now is, you know, if, if that that's like the one I, I care about the least at this point. If something happens to it. Um... Okay, so I changed multiple antennas. I've changed my jumper going from the radio to the amp. There's a three-foot jumper on it. I've tried a six-foot, tried a nine-foot, tried a 12-foot. Makes no difference. Okay, that's the only jumper in here going from the radio to the amp, and then the amp goes to the antenna. I have no meter in here, only when I hook something up like this. Okay, this is a direct feed line from that serial. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe it's the radio. I've got a Galaxy 959 in here. I swapped radios. I put another Galaxy 959 in here. There's nothing wrong with them. They work great on the base. Everything tests out. So I've changed amplifiers, antennas, radios, jumper. The only thing I haven't changed is the power wire. And I cannot see the power wire doing this. I mean, I've got it running all the way up to the battery. Uh, you know, it has to be, at least my thought, is something weird in this truck causing this. My 667 used to put out like 800 watts in this vehicle. No trouble at all. But now I have this weird reflect issue going on. At least this meter's telling me it's going on. And uh, it's not making the power it's supposed to. So I assume if it's got the reflect, that's why it's not making the power. Anyways, we're going to put this on. And like I said, everything in here has been changed. I'm going crazy. Stand by. I'll show you. Okay, just the radio's on. The amplifier is in line, but it's turned off. So this is just to show this is radio power only. We're going to check the SWR. Calibrate it. OK, 
Okay, we're just going to go on channel 20. I'm not going to do the 140 thing. It's pretty dang close. Okay, so the SWR is acceptable just on the radio. Um, let's show radio power only. 30 watt scale. The meter is a little stingy, but still, we're going to go with it. We're on PEP. Hello, audio. Okay, I do have the uh, dead key turned up so I could calibrate the SWR. Hold on, let me turn that back down. All right, you guys know how it is. If you don't have enough carrier, you can't calibrate your SWR. So I've turned the dead key back down where I normally run it. Okay. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello. Okay. That's radio only. Now we'll go to reverse power. Hello. 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 Okay, nothing going on. Now I'm going to turn the amp on. Stand by. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. There's the radio. Like I said, I swapped it out. So I know it's not the radio. And I swapped the amp out. I used to have a 667. This is a little 250 in here now. Okay, amp's on. Now we're going to go back and test it. And vehicle is not running right now. So if I start it, it's going to make more power. Okay. We're on the 30 watt scale, reverse power. Look at what happens when I turn the amp on. You see how it goes up and then it goes even further? It takes a second. It does this on every amplifier I put in here. On no matter what antenna I use, no matter what jumper size I use, and no matter what radio I use. My amplifier is grounded, not only through the power wire and the coax, but also a separate chassis ground. The radio is grounded to a chassis ground. I've checked everything with a continuity meter. The antenna is grounded. I've checked everything with a continuity meter. I've went over everything. can't think of anything I haven't checked. Hello? Hello? Okay, so it... it Reflect goes down as I talk. I will go to forward power, 300 watt scale. Hello, hello, audio. See, I would have never known there's a problem unless I I, I didn't check the the reverse power because I've never checked it before. Figured I check it and, and this is what I'm seeing. Okay, now I'm going to start the vehicle. Stand by. Okay, truck's running, battery's charging. We're on the same 300 watt scale. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Okay. Um, put it on reverse, 30 watt scale. Hello? Hello? Now here's a crazy thing. I've had that Texas Star 667 in here for years. I don't know how long this has been going on. But, it doesn't fry anything. It doesn't fry this amp. But, I'm seeing it on here. The reflective power. So, is there just something weird that's showing reflective power when it's not there? Is there reflective power? How do I get rid of it? it? It's it's crazy. I know they say it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and set the SWR with the amp on. Stand by and I'll get that calibrated. Okay, so I've got it calibrated. I've got the mic gain all the way off, so we don't have any exhaust noise or anything causing any issues. It's calibrated. This is with the amplifier on. 
throwing an SWR of about two and a half right there with the amp on. Yeah, maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. It's good with the amp off. I just wanted to show that. Go back on reverse power, 30 watt skill. Okay, just turn the mic gain back up. It's reverse power, 30 watt skill. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Swings back to five. Forward power, 300 watts go. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. The amp's almost doing what it's supposed to do. If I put this amp on the bench, you know, I'll probably see 275, 300 out of it with the hot radio. It's got two Toshiba 2290s in it. But this is fine. This is fine what I'm seeing. What I'm concerned with is this right here. Hello, audio. The amplifier is mounted down. The case is grounded to the floor where it's screwed down. It also has another ground wire. You probably can't see it. It goes right to the seat bolt there. It's all checked with the continuity meter. The radio itself, the case is grounded right to this metal bracket where it screws into the chassis. This metal bracket is bolted through the floor with nuts underneath the vehicle. The top of the heads of the nuts or bolts are welded to it. I made this bracket. I've checked this for continuity. It has it with the antenna off, with the power wire unplugged. It has continuity from the case of the radio to a ground point. The same thing with this, everything unplugged, antenna unplugged everything. It has continuity from the case to a ground point. Driving me crazy. Here's the antenna. Yes, I drilled two holes. I don't care, it's an old vehicle. It's grounded to the bottom of the roof. I took the primer off. It's grounded. I used a continuity meter from there to other parts of the vehicle. It is grounded 100% for sure. If you think this matters here, I thought it might have, so I took it off. This plays no difference whatsoever, whether it's on or off. So I've checked all my bases. I've, you know, put my big tri-mount back here. I've moved the magnet mounts everywhere. It makes absolutely no difference at all. And that vehicle right there, same vehicle except it's a truck and this is the Expedition. No reflux at all, everything's perfect. And the radio, the amp, none of that stuff is even chassis grounded, just the antenna. It's, it's crazy. There's my power wire right here, you know. It's an 8 eight gauge, but it's, it's a good quality 8 gauge. There's a positive. Running straight to the positive of the battery. Here's the negative. Running straight to the negative of the battery. I'm going to try to run the negative, ground it right at the amplifier, see if that changes everything, anything. But I've always had it run here and I didn't used to have this problem. I used to have it run like I have in the F-150, right to the lug right here. But just to, you know, rule everything out, I ran it directly to the battery. The jumper is a new jumper. I've replaced it. The wire for the antenna is all good. I've inspected it. I've checked it. Like I said, I just tore the whole thing out last night and put a Wilson 5000 on it roof mount and didn't change anything now this reverse power you see here hello you see 10 if I put the 667 in it because it puts out more power I'll see 20 and it'll swing back to 10 
versus this is 10 swinging back to 5. Here's another thing to show. When we go to average power, hello, hello, I got a little backswing. Um, the dead key's low. It's, you know, under a watt. I, it shouldn't have backswing. I don't see it on the bench. I don't see it on my base antenna. Only in this configuration in this vehicle. The only thing I can think of, and I don't think that's the problem, but let me show you. Just the static there. Some of it is, you know, the LED lights in my garage. I'm in my driveway. But some of it is the fuel pump. The fuel pump does make a high-pitched whine. It's always done it in this vehicle, and it drives me batty. But it never had this issue years ago, and it had the same fuel pump in it. I'm at a loss here. Like I said, radio's been changed. Amplifier's been changed. Jumper length has been changed multiple times. Entire antenna setup has been changed over and over again. Radio's chassis grounded. Amplifier's chassis grounded. Antenna's chassis grounded. Any ideas, guys? Now here's the crazy thing. As tore up as it looks on this meter, this thing gets out. Even with that little tiny 250 in it, this thing gets out. With the 667, it gets out. I mean, it sounds like a big-ass base station. I key up going down the highway, truckers say, oh, turn that shit off, you base station. I've recorded it back at the house. I've got more power in the F-150. I've got an Altashiba 1x4 in there. And this thing has more modulation and audio over the air than that does. And the meter's jacked up looking. Any ideas, guys? Thanks for watching, man. Y'all have a good one. Oh, and this is just a, just just a, a directed at one person only, so don't get offended. Victor, if you're watching this, suck a dick. All right, guys, you have a good one.